Hello and welcome to another episode of the Wrestling Skull Podcast. I'm your host, John Scott, joined as always by my co-host, Matt Essex. Matt, how are you doing this week? We had a we had a midweek break. You've been away um, on, on holiday. How was your time away first, Matt? Yeah, really good. Uh, you know, you can't complain too much when you go to uh, and get some winter sun, you know, you can't really complain. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly can't. It's been absolutely freezing in the UK, my end. Um uh, Starting to really feel it as well every time I go out in the morning for work and uh, so yeah, good good to have you back, Matt. And of course, last week we had our um, wrestling arts third episode that went out. Got some great feedback from that. Really, really happy that everybody is uh, enjoying that. Um, okay, guys. Well, we've got some breaking news. Just as we was coming on, Matt said to me, "Have you checked out uh, some some news that's hitting all over the place? It looks absolutely legit." to me um, and that is that none other than Matt who we've certainly um, we, we've been speaking about him a lot in our King of the Ring retrospective that we done last year um, and the man is the Olympic gold medalist himself the man with the three eyes integrity intelligence and intensity uh, none other than Kurt Angle himself will be inducted into this year's WWE Hall of Fame 2017 that just that's just come out literally. We're live tonight, and uh, yeah, just getting some news on that. That um, he will be there. Of course, Kurt Angle. I mean, I'm sure everybody knows who he is, but you know, if you want to know some credentials, let's just read some. Angle held a variety of championships within WWE during his career, including the World Heavyweight Championship title, the w- WCW Championship, uh, the US title the WWE Championship four times, the European Championship, the Hardcore Championship, the Intercontinental Championship, and a Tag Team Championship, as well as um, having a King of the Ring to his name, as we just mentioned. So uh, definitely, without a doubt, Matt has the, you know... Uh, no, no, um, no qualms about him going in. Just, um, just uh, as, as a, a you know, small piece into this because it is breaking news, and we didn't really go on the air, sort of, um, you know, ready to talk about this. But just as a um, an initial reaction to that, Matt, is that at, uh, is that something good? Because we we've, we've had a lot of emails about Kurt Angle and would he come back? Would he wrestle one more match? Are you satisfied that we, maybe we're not going to get that last match, but he is going into the Hall of Fame at least? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, of course, he's been like due for the Hall of Fame for a long time. You know, he's been bound that way. You know, I, I, I was expecting maybe it would have been the next couple of years, not straight away like now. But, mm-hmm. you know, I was hope holding out for that one last match. But you never know. I, I wouldn't rule it out. But definitely, yeah, uh, not many people deserve to be in there as much as he does. So I'm glad that he's in there. Yeah, um, likewise, Kangol, definitely one of my most favourite wrestlers. Um so obviously he spent quite a lot, a lot of his career as well, his latter career in TNA and um, had some terrific matches. You can't take them away from him um, that, he's, that he's done in TNA. But um, obviously he's, he's not, you know, he did have, he was out of favour with WWE when he left. I'm glad that they've, they're kind of on good terms. Um, I was saying to Matt just before we uh, we got live that I'd, I really hope that they do a good deal with him, not just merchandise um, obviously, they're going to try and shift a few T-shirts within this. No doubt about that. But um, you know, I'd like to see a DVD signed for him. Um, most certainly, like a documentary style. And you know, maybe Matt going into WrestleMania, it does need um, some some traction. You do need a little bit more buzz to go into it. So I'm I, I would like to see Kurt Angle involved in something uh, leading into WrestleMania. Uh, I'm not talking about you know the most death-defined storyline, but just something, even if it's just like a couple of nights on Raw or SmackDown, uh, just talking about a particular match or something that um, he might have an interest in, you know, something where we can see him back on WWE TV, because that, I think, would uh, make make all the sense in the world. How about for you, Matt, is there any, any ideas that spring out to mind that you'd like to see Angle doing that, that's currently going on? Uh, I'd love to see him do a little bit of work with the American Alphas. Mm. Um but whatever he does, you know, I'll be all, I'll be happy with it as long as it's not Kurt Angle versus Shane McMahon. Yeah, <laughs> oh <my God>. yeah. <laughs> um, and that actually, I was thinking about it, Matt. I was thinking, who will induct Kurt Angle? Uh, could be that man you just said, um, knowing the way WWE go. Um, yeah, I don't know. That'll be an interesting one though to see who he he has to, as his um, as his inductor inductor. 
Um, also, news coming obviously this week is um, the sad news: the passing of Jimmy uh, Superfly Snooker, just passing away recently. Matt, um, you know we haven't heard too much from him since you know all the uh, you know allegations and all the rest of it came up. You know, been in and out of the limelight. Obviously, this news very sad news. Um, you know, for you, Jimmy Snooker, just just to speak about his career, was he somebody that you enjoyed watching, or was he way before your time, and you just sort of got to see him when he he came back now and then and done the the little spots during during some of the Rumbles and Survivor Series and stuff. Uh, yeah, he definitely was before my time, but you know, like I got, you've always got respect to respect a guy like that for the contribution they made to wrestling. You know, it, it's like you can always question. What did the other wrestlers take from him? You know, Mick Foley speaks about highly about him a lot and how he inspired him and the stuff like that. Even jumping off that cage, you know, such an iconic moment. But it does so much for the business as a whole, as in like, like bringing it into a new generation and just taking it that one step further. So I'm glad he was there to do that for the wrestling at the time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so like I say, yeah, really sad news on on Jimmy uh, Superfly Snooker, no doubt about that. Um, okay, well, let's get into this uh, episode then, shall we? Um, top of the, the bill, Matt, we can't look any further, of course, than um, of, obviously this past weekend's UK Championship Tournament, uh, presented by none other than WWE, uh, all the way from Blackpool, good old sunny Blackpool, <laughs> on the coast, Matt. Um Obviously, Matt, going into this, what was your sort of expectations? Because obviously, we'd seen World of Sport, and you know, we we've been sort of, you know, in heaven over here with with British wrestling at the moment. We've been slightly spoiled, you know, like two events within the space of like what three weeks. It's uh, it's quite amazing, you know, to to have that on TV and a completely different roster, um, which you know, I think first and foremost goes to show just how good the industry is. Um, that's far of producing great wrestlers, like a lot of talent going on both in both rosters. And let's be honest, Matt, there is like so many other wrestlers that weren't even involved in either um, that you could you could really name off. You know, a good another probably thirty um, wrestlers really that you you could talk about, um, including Zack Zabra Jr. of course, and, and and guys like that. So you know, really, uh, what an incredible time um, to be a fan of British wrestling. And Matt, um, you know, on on this past weekend, I think really and truly, um, you know, I want to say this first and foremost that I think all the guys done a tremendous job of um, getting themselves you know, over to the crowd, you know, sometimes it, although some of the crowd probably would have been up on the British wrestling, there, there, there was probably a majority there that, you know, hadn't heard of a lot of those guys, uh, even still, and were maybe just WWE pro, um, you know, sort of fans, um, but I felt like they'd done an excellent job of uh, executing, um, you know, both from WWE as well in the backstage to the guys that went out and performed or of getting themselves over. Matt, um, the first night, obviously, I, I felt like the first night was kind of like um, just an introduction kind of show, like a pre-show almost, where we just was getting to know the characters within their matches. Like I felt it was um, it was it was a different vibe to to what we got on the second night. What what did you think first and foremost, starting with the the first uh, the Saturday? Um, show that we got, Matt, um, obviously see, seeing everybody in there. Uh, yeah, I thought it was highly enjoyable. I mean, I think, like, they picked the right kind of 16 guys, um, and I think they all ha- they all did tremendously well. I mean, like, people say, you know, that like these guys were from the Indies and that, you know, they, they won't be of the WWE caliber, but that would be so far from the truth because they put on a show and it was – a WWE product, you know, mm. and WWE had faith with them and they knew that they could pull this off and they did. Uh, so it's just great news for British wrestling that we have that kind of talent over here that's just like going around on the independence and actually, you know, they're better than people think because they are of WWE quality because they can just jump onto a show like this and perform. So I was glad that they got that stage and when I saw the actual show, I thought the presentation was great. It didn't quite feel 100% like what we get normally from WWE it did have that kind of different vibe about it mm-hmm. and I did like the way that the matches were really quite physical and it didn't necessarily have to be the WWE standard of doing a finishing move to win a match because it kind of gave it that more like realistic kind of feel when they were 
really going at it. And, you know, just when they were throwing people into the turnbuckles and that being enough to pin them, you know, make it a little bit more believable to me, in fact. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I think, yeah, I think the presentation did stand that as its own thing, which it really needed to be, um, quite honestly. They had to come up with something something different um, to what anyone else has seen. And I, I really do think it done that. Uh, Matt, obviously, you know, um, we're, we're going out live tonight on Monday, but obviously, you know, 24 hours removed. What we got last night, I felt, was um, a, a, an excellent show, one I actually would like to go back on very soon and watch again because I felt like it was an extra, uh, an excellent tournament. Um, obviously, we've been covering a lot of King of the Rings and I've often spoke about I think it is a wasted opportunity that they WWE doesn't have that kind of tournament on one night I'm not talking about uh, on you know various nights I'm talking about one night and making it a you know a, a standout alone event not just on the back end of a raw or some sort of exclusive at the end of a show I'm talking about one night and I, I do think it's a wasted thing but this this was an excellent um you know, kind of tournament um, of, of that caliber, and and obviously, Matt, I, I felt like a lot of the talent, you know, first and foremost, that was on there. I want to, I want to give a shout out to um, uh, a couple of the wrestlers, uh, Tyson T Bone, who um, of course was was uh, knocked out in the first round by uh, Wolfgang, uh, somebody I've known for a long time, and I, I was really glad that WWE had signed him up because uh, he was, he, he's always been somebody since the first time I saw him. In uh, I think it was IPW UK in London. I definitely, you know, Matt, when you go to a show sometimes and you, you there's something you see and nobody else can, and you go, yeah, I like that guy. He's got something about him. That is how I felt about that guy. But a lot of the the, my, the people that I'd gone with were like looking at me like I was nuts um, at the time. But there was definitely something about him. Um, um, and and obviously, Matt, when we got as, as I say last night, when we got to the quarterfinals, we had you know I would say. <laughs> Um, by by that point, WWE had done such a good job of getting over who these guys are, what they're about, what their intentions are, and how they operate in the ring. Like I felt they got that down to a team at um, better than better than half the time they do on you know on WWE TV. Quite honestly, um, I felt like they were all individual. Uh, which is a really tough thing to do, Matt, because, you know, again, if you're an American fan and you're watching this, you might think to yourself, what the hell? I don't know anybody. Um, but I felt, even if you was an American fan, and I, I did ask a few of my friends that didn't have a clue of anybody was in this, they, by the second night, knew uh, everything they needed to know about the guys. Uh, I think it, there was some good announcing done. Um, one thing I'm going to give a huge props here for WWE straight away for Matt is the fact that, especially on the first night, uh, WWE mentioned all the uh, local wrestling promotions that these guys operate in. They gave um, they gave a lot of information about where these guys were trained, who by. Um, and you know that is something, Matt. Where I think you know you and I will probably both know that four years ago that would never be the case um, because WWE was the only existing. Uh, they they were only existing in their own bubble. Um, the 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 idea of talking about another promotion was just never. It has to be WWE's product or um, their identity and character. Otherwise, forget it. Um, was you, would, was you would you know was you surprised about that, Matt? That that they took that stance immediately about just you know let's just get real with it and let's just say where they're coming from. Was you surprised that WWE did that? Yeah, I was kind of surprised. Um, but it's more kind of a fact that you just get so used to them, like, avoiding those kind of questions and, like, just glossing over that and just pretending that it doesn't exist. But, you know, I was glad that they finally have gone in a different direction and that they are more open and honest about, like, the talent that's out there and the other promotions. Mm. Because it just makes sense. I mean, it's not going to do any physical damage to the WWE product, like, telling us a little bit about these guys. In fact, it's probably more beneficial because, let's be honest, there's not much competition for WWE, you know, and you know, even though if they want to do a little bit of like promoting for another company here and there, just little bits like that, that might help them because mm. if they're looking seriously at the um, sort of British talent that we have over here, then 
like anything they can do to help will just help them in the future because if we can like flourish in Britain then they can just cherry pick who they want and then you know it's good for them